Hello everyone, welcome to Learn of Flow. In this video, we will discuss about today's late code problem, Paint House 3. Okay, so this is a hard level problem and we will understand what this question is trying to say, how we can uh, solve this question. We'll also visualize this question based on all the example, like uh, taking one example, I'll specifically take the example two that is sort in this case. So uh, we'll understand how this question is working and what they are exactly asking us to find out. And then at the end, what we will find out is like we will write some code, uh, write a solution to this. And after the solution, we'll again understand how the solution is actually working for us uh, or what exactly we did in the solution. So uh, that's what we'll do in our uh, whole videos today. So uh, watch till the end and I'll make sure that you understand this question completely. Also, before moving on, I'd like make sure to subscribe to this channel for regular late code videos. It says that there's a row of M houses in a small city. Each house must be painted with one of the N colors. Okay. So the, there are M houses and it must be painted with one of the N colors level from one to N. Okay. Some houses have, or have been painted last summer and should not be painted again. Okay. So like it says like the, there are some kind of houses of a, like uh, in a row and then some of the houses uh, like we need to paint these houses uh with those in colors we have right and it also says like some of the houses are already being painted last summer say some of the houses are already painted so we don't need to paint those again now this is a neighborhood is a maximal group okay now it's uh describing what's a neighborhood a neighborhood is a maximal group of continuous houses that's continuous houses that are painted with the same color okay so that's what a neighborhood is whenever we paint with some kind of same color we uh, find this is the maximum houses painted with the same color that's the neighborhood we have okay moving on it says like as an example say there are houses of uh, one two two three three two one one so it says like it contains five neighborhood that is one uh two two three three two and one one it's just grouping the numbers uh into like uh, same numbers each okay so that's how we are grouping them that's what they are saying as a neighborhood so if we say that that there are five neighborhoods like there are kind of five groups of uh, same numbers uh, each okay so that's how we make it so that's a neighborhood you can say so that's the count over here now uh let's uh, see what further it says like given an array of houses okay so there we have we are given an houses array so this house array probably stores this number of uh, houses that is what it says for the uh is the color of the house of i uh like the i house color is given in a house array it is, it is zero if it is not painted like uh, it says like if it is not painted last summer we should go ahead with that so that's what he said if it's not painted last summer that means it should be zero else it should it will have some value in it okay now, uh, also it says there is the M cross N matrix cost. So there's an M cross N matrix cost. There's a cost matrix given to us. And along with that, it says like an integer target is given to us. Okay. So uh, now what we, uh, what is this cost matrix is? Cost matrix is the cost of the paint of the ith house with the color J plus one. Okay. So that's the more or less the cost matrix. We need to paint the ith house with uh, the color J plus one. And that is the uh, cost being given to us. Okay. Now, uh, just if we look into this, then uh, further it says that at the end, we need to return the minimum cost of painting all the remaining house, like all the remaining house, like whichever house is not painted yet, right? So we need to find the minimum cost of painting these houses uh, in such a way that there are exactly target neighborhood. Okay, so that's the catch over here. The catch being, it shouldn't be like we keep on painting whatever color we find and we do with it. It should be like, uh, that our target uh, neighborhood should be there. So target is basically the number of neighborhood. It should be there. Neighborhood is what it, it defines over here. So uh, now we need to find out the number of target uh, neighborhoods we need. Okay, target is given in such that way. Now, uh, so uh, it also says like if it is not possible, then return minus one. If our target neighborhood is not possible to attain, then we should return and minus one in this case. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the question. I think is pretty understandable what they are asking to do. Let's try to see uh, those uh, examples we have and try to understand uh, what the uh, what exactly uh, the way it is going ahead. Okay, now uh, you can see like houses are given the first case zero 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 zero, and then the cost is given in that manner. Okay, like for each house, there are two colors being given uh, and each color has a cost with it. Like cost of the paint, i house, this is the 0th house, right? 
with color J plus one. So color one and color two, that's the cost being given to us. So color one, if we paint this house one with color one, then the cost will be one. In case we paint this house one, uh, house like zero eighth house with color two, we will get a, a cost of 10. Okay, so that's what you given to us. And moving further, uh, see what exactly we have. We are given like this, and in case we cannot paint the like this target houses, like all the houses, then we should return uh, minus one. So that's given. So after like see, we will take the minimum from here one, and then we find two, uh, two. Okay, that's how what we went ahead as a solution one, then two and two. Uh, selecting the second color because that has a lesser cost. Okay, like we need to find the minimum cost of painting, right? And then uh, we went ahead with one and one because those two give us and uh, lesser cost, okay? But remember here, you, you could have chosen uh, at this one, right? This one, because that was a much minimum, but remember if we have chosen uh, two at this place, okay? Uh, then how many neighbors would have been? One, two, three, and four neighbors will be there, but our target was given as three. So we had to do something so that our target remained in our, uh, uh, like our target was three is can, can be fulfilled. So we went out with five as a minimum cost, okay? So there we need to see how we can minimize the cost we have of it. So you can see like at every position, at every house, we need to make two decisions. And based on two decision, we need to move ahead with one decision. And uh, like we need to take two decisions, like out of two decisions, we need to move ahead with one decision. It, it cannot be greedy because if you went ahead with greedy, then you see we would end up taking this, uh, uh, last one we have over here, right? Uh, like uh, if I just uh, show you over here, if we have taken a greedy approach, then our greedy approach would have taken this one we have, but we cannot take this one because that will end up in a uh, wrong, like end up in not finishing our target, okay? Like the target neighborhood. So we need to have, uh, when we cannot go ahead with uh, greedy, then our approach should be more like a uh, dynamic approach or the dynamic programming approach where we'll keep in a uh, memorization, like mem memoization, of the all the previous calculations we made and based on the memorization we will make our further calculations okay so that will be the approach to us so let's uh, understand a smaller example a smaller example brings the this uh, example to let's understand this and let's see how exactly this uh, uh, particular one works for us okay so let me erase all this stuff and then work quiet with that Now let's understand this particular example. I just wrote the cost uh, array over here for uh, each to understand. And then the target is three that you can see over here, okay? So on each step, we will uh, see that for colors like houses like this, two, one, two, we cannot have an, uh, there's no need to paint these houses. It's more like we will go ahead with uh, not painting them, rather we'll, we are only going to paint this house and this house, like the zero, zero, one, okay? Now let's understand uh, how we will go ahead in this, like what will be the visual approach to that? Okay, so the first house is zero. So, so uh, we'll have two uh, ways to go ahead with the based on the cost. So we'll say the total cost, say and the taking with, with T, uh, the total cost uh, till now will be one. If we take color one, okay, that will be one. And we mentioned that we took color request one over here, okay? That's the approach. And also uh, we'll keep a note that uh, what's the, uh, till now, like till this position uh, in the backwards, how many neighbors we have over here, okay? So that means we have a approach of n, n equals one. So those are three uh, things we have over here. And if we go ahead with cost, uh, the cost one, like the color one, okay? And if we go ahead with color two in the fast house, if we color it with the second two, then how, what happens? We will end up having uh, T equals, uh, say, uh, that the total cost, the total cost is 10. Till now 10. So if we, as we go ahead with further houses, it will keep on increasing uh, on which house we paint, okay? Then the cost till now will be something like, uh, no, the color will be two. This is not the cost. This is the color will be two because we chose the second color, okay? So that's what being said to us. And then we'll have a, uh, like till now, the neighbor neighborhood is uh, one. Still up to this point, there are only one uh, color, okay? Uh, now, next thing we find the second, like two, uh, two that is, is already being colored, okay? So once it's already being colored, we'll simply move ahead with this, like move down, like no need to color the second, right? So that, that will be total cost will still remain as one. Our color will be here, 
uh, color here is two, two being given to us, like that's the color we have already. And the neighborhood count increased from, uh, neighborhood count is actually became two. Uh, why neighborhood count becomes two? Like the first one we painted with uh, color one and next we have color two. So one, one and two, two different neighborhoods. So that's neighborhood count become two. And then if we uh, went ahead with this color, then what happens? Our total cost becomes uh, remains as it is, that is 10. So I'm, I'm writing it a bit smaller. I'll zoom it if possible. Uh, so the total cost uh, remains our 10, okay? Because we are not coloring the current house. And then further, we went ahead with the uh, like color remains our uh, two. Now see the color, previous color was two and this color was, is also two. So we can go ahead with something like neighborhood remains our one, okay? So here neighborhood remains one. Then we find uh, one. Uh, next element, as we move ahead with our uh, step, we find the next, uh, that is, is already colored, so th there's no need to color it further. We find the total cost uh, still remains one in our case, okay? Our color changes to uh, one, like the current color we have is one, and the neighborhood count uh, goes to something like three. We reached a neighborhood count three because they initially we painted with one, then two, then one, the neighborhood count becomes three. And if we went ahead with uh, the other piece, uh, coloring it with uh, two initially, then what if we have over here? That total cost uh, remains uh, 10 because we are not coloring it right now. As uh, the, uh, the color we have over here is one and the neighborhood count becomes uh, how much? It becomes two. Two being we painted two, then two, two is already there and we came across with the color one. So see like two, two, and we changed it to one. So th thus, we, it became like neighborhood count became two. Our target neighborhood was given as like target should be three. Now, next move ahead, the move ahead, we find that it has again a two, okay? Once it has a two, so we find over here that uh, our uh, total count remains uh, like a one, okay? And total count remains one, and then color, color of our current house is a two, fine. And our neighborhood count became something like four because uh, one and it change, again changes, so neighborhood count became four. So we know that we cannot move ahead with this because our neighborhood count became four. Our target was something like to keep it within a range of three. That was our target. So we cannot go ahead with this uh, step. Like we cannot go ahead with coloring our first house as one. Okay, now we'll uh, look further to check uh, if we can go ahead further with our coloring house, uh, like coloring this house as two. So what we found that, uh, that the total count, like total cost we have is remains uh, to be the 10 because we are not coloring this house, it is already colored. Then uh, the color of this particular house uh, becomes what? The color is two, fine. So see, like one, two, the neighborhood became one, the neighborhood became two, and the neighborhood became uh, like uh, three over here because we are again changing to neighborhood, okay? We are again changing the neighborhood, so it became three over here. So we found this. Next, we have uh, another house in our array. So we actually, uh, if we find that this house is a, a zero, so we need to paint this house, okay? So I'm just breaking it into two parts. So one, uh, okay, fine. We are going ahead with the two step because after this uh, particular step, we will be going ahead with either painting it with the color or not painting with another color, okay? So let's see what we have. Say after this, uh, say we paint this with color one. Okay, so the, here are our color over here. So we paint this with color one. So total co color co count became we had 10 and we paint it with color one. So we take it as five. So total co uh, cost became 15. Fine. Now, post that, we see that what the current color becomes, current color becomes one. Fine. And what is the neighborhood count? Neighborhood count becomes, um, see, neighborhood was three. Uh, previous color was two and we are changing the neighborhood like uh, changing the color so it's become one so it become four so again we find that this is not an possible case and since our target was three okay since we are given a target of three so we cannot go with the neighborhood count of four in this let's see who, we have another uh way for us see if we can find a solution to that way or not so the total count becomes something like uh, we had 10 previously and the cost we have is uh one so the like the total cost is uh, 11. Then our current color is, we just took the second color. So the current uh, color we have over here is like uh, two, fine. And the neighborhood count, see what remains over here. Fine, the neighborhood was three. The previous color was two. The current color is also two. So the neighborhood remains three. So neighborhood count is not included. So and, and then we find that our 
particular house, the end of the house array is already. So we are now sure like this is our final answer to our array, like to our whole uh, uh, test case. So what is the answer we have? The answer will be 11 and this will be our answer. See, the final answer given to us is 11. So that's the answer we should return. Okay, so this is all the stuff we need to do in this particular question. So I think you, you can actually visualize how we can go ahead with the, with this question like this and how we should uh, move ahead. Okay, say in see just in case you don't uh, find out that the color at this position or the last house, whatever we have, we cannot uh, paint this without going to like without exceeding our target neighborhood. Okay, without exceeding this, then in that case we should return minus one. The minus one being we cannot uh, find a solution to this. So that's the more or less the whole uh, target behind the whole uh, like the exact question. Okay, so I think it's uh, it's understandable like how we are going ahead with a question like this. Now let's uh, like implement this whole concept within uh, with some code and then uh, try to find out how we can uh, like we can do this in a minimum value. Okay, minimum value in the sense in like uh, we can do this uh, properly. Okay, so what is the idea? Let's revise it one sec. What's the idea behind this? So we are traversing, we are traversing simply through the houses array, right? The first thing we did was the left to right to traverse the whole uh, houses array. Then we keep up track of the neighborhood by comparing the color of the current house and the previous house, right? So we keep a track of the neighborhood, like right? whatever the current house and the previous house, and we uh, incremented our neighborhood, like right? so. That's what we did. We keep a track of this. And then at any, at any point of uh, like number of neighborhood exceeded the target, like uh, over here, the number of neighborhood exceeded our target was three. So it exceeded and we did what? We keep a backtrack. We didn't went ahead with this uh, path. We moved back and went ahead with the other path, right? Now, uh, so that's like backtracking is like more like you are into uh, uh, moving into the depth of the path. If you can find it, you are good to go. Else you move back like a DFS kind of approach, uh, okay? So you're finding an end of the solution. And if you cannot find a solution, you move back and then we, you start, uh, like you backtrack and then you start again. So that's the way. And in case like there can be multiple ways that, that, that you can see that there can be multiple ways to reach a uh, target. Like it's, it's not only that you cannot reach targets on other two ways and you find an only one solution. This may not be the ultimate case. There can be multiple ways to find a uh, target value, okay? So multiple ways uh, you can reach a neighborhood of three over here. So that's possible. So you need to remember, you need to find the minimum of all the cost, like whatever with the total uh, found out, you should find find the minimum of all of them, okay? So uh, for uh, uh, like optimized of this code, uh, like that's a backtracking you can see. So to make it a bit more optimized, we should go ahead with a memorization uh, what we get in our uh, Danny program we approach. So let's let, let's uh, write this uh, whole code over here. Okay, let's write this and then we'll understand again how this code ex actually work and let's write and find out how it works. Okay. Okay, so here you can see like this is like the six ms solution that is uh, faster than having this. Obviously, this is the uh, faster solution uh, possible. So uh, what exactly we did over here is more or less the exact thing we uh, went ahead with uh, doing uh, like explaining in the whole uh, video. We will miss that. So what exactly we did? We went ahead with a uh, DP array, the DP of something like first doing the houses, the color, and the group group being the neighbors we have over here. Okay, from then we just filled all of them with the maximum cost we have. Then we went ahead to find if the house is zero. Then we just initialize the uh, 
value to the cost of z that is the just the first cost we have and else we just uh, went ahead with the uh, particular value we just uh, say the dp of this target value will be zero so we just initialized over here okay say uh, we house zero so we need to color it so the initial cost is something we calculated that the, all the costs we have we just calculated those okay we just put those value cost directly onto the dp array and then also we whenever we got like the house is not zero so we just took our pointer to find and then we initialized that this is zero and so we don't need to uh, our cost at this position will be zero so we don't need to go ahead with our uh, further at this position okay so basically we just convert this cost and then over here we just uh, went ahead look away our initial house zero was done so we went ahead with uh, finding uh, our search from our house one and then in house one what we did exactly over here we just checked if our house is greater than zero that means it's previously painted so we went ahead with finding out what's the minimum at this position like uh, like the remaining remaining bin uh, we just took an uh, hr over here so hr is basically how many houses remaining okay and uh, then what we did like this is the target minus one so we are just reducing the target just on that and also like uh, we went ahead with this uh, dp array that if there is any change like not change no changes are required if house is equal to zero and if there is a change is uh, going ahead okay the change in the color is happening so our, uh, remaining or uh, the target should reduce so remaining minus one is going ahead over here okay and that, that's we are finding what's the minimum cost we are finding out over here if, if, if we like with this change is it kind of like uh so the house is greater than zero so we are not painting this but we need to check uh the neighborhood is at which position like how many neighborhoods are there okay and in case in case like the house is not zero like we are painting the house so we are just painting with like uh current house being if the like the cost being at this position so, so you can see the cost being calculated and then we are adding the cost to our houses and if not uh, if a change in the neighborhood is happening so that we managing the change based on the particular conditions we have we're just managing the, the change being uh, calculated for us okay and moving ahead we uh, simply calculated the all the final cost that we are uh, uh, about to find like that's uh, going exactly by what we discussed few minutes back and then we uh, here we just took another function uh, this function is actually help us calculate the minimum cost okay at each position so uh, at multiple point you can find that mean is a function being called and how we did actually you can see the function takes a 2d array uh, over here but how we given it we given a uh, dp of i minus one like dp of i or dp of i minus one you can find it over here as well okay so what exactly happening over here we are finding the minimum of this like we are saying that uh, I minus one, and that's sending a 2D array. So DP is initially 3D array, which is storing the three different values in different places. So uh, that's how we are uh, finding the minimum cost. And ultimately, we are returning that the min, being the uh, this particular value mean that we find out over here. So mean, uh, if this mean is less than max cost, then we should return mean. And uh, in case our mean is still equals to max cost, that's what we took as a max cost over here. If our mean is still the max cost, that means no way is possible uh, to to uh, paint houses with a uh, given target okay so that's the final answer over there and you can see that this answer works pretty good with a six millisecond solution and this is uh, uh, like 100 uh, faster than like all the solutions you can find okay so i hope you can understand how this uh, particular question works so if you have any doubt make sure you just uh, point point it out over in the comment section below i will help you out to any way possible okay so that's all about this question guys so uh, that's all uh, about this question. I hope you can understand this question uh, easily. So make sure to subscribe to this channel and uh, if you face any problem, obviously comment down in the course. Uh, also uh, um, like this video so that I, it helps me motivate to more. Uh, also like this videos so that it motivates me to make more such videos uh, for you. Thank you all for watching this video. Hope to see you soon in my next video as well. Thank you.